Hey guys, Dantix here. These are the top 10 things you need to know before starting Cyberpunk's new expansion, Phantom Liberty. Let's get right into it. One of the best new features in Phantom Liberty is the black market. Early on in your adventure, you can talk to an eccentric chroma located in the EBM Petrochem Stadium in Dogtown. You can find him on your map under the black market icon. This is a unique shop because any iconic weapons you've missed in your adventure show up here. Oh yes, never fear missing the good stuff because the good stuff will be here to buy at a modest premium. Perfect for those who want to complete their collection of wall-mounted iconics without having to restart their game or those who want to reset their build and try something new. Be sure to check here every so often to make sure you got everything you need. Thanks to NVIDIA's 40 series graphics cards, new tech is available right now that makes the graphics absolutely breathtaking without sacrificing frames and even, in my testing, improving them from what they were. What you're seeing now is full ray tracing with the new DLSS 3.5 which introduces ray reconstruction. This is an enhanced AI that soups up your ray tracing and frame generation to ultra realistic levels. So check it out and let's continue. First, if you head to your apartment or any property you own, you can access your laptop which will let you purchase cars straight from an online marketplace. One such vehicle is the Hellhound, a Militech truck that comes equipped with both front mounted machine guns and a missile launcher that homes in on targets. Phantom Liberty brings with it new vehicles for you to collect and some existing ones have received upgrades like new weapon systems, so be sure to check them out and add them to your collection. You can tell a vehicle has weapons by this little icon when you bring up the menu. There are a lot of vehicle based missions in Cyberpunk and having one fully armed makes it much easier, especially since vehicle combat has received some nice changes. With one press of the button you either switch to your vehicle's weapon systems or whip out a single hand weapon like your pistol or SMG to fire at your enemies. You can move the reticle around and fire where you target, making for a much more fluid and precise car shootout or even drive bys this also works on bikes. Speaking of bikes, you can now whip out your katana and reflect bullets while slashing at your enemies. Classic arcade game road rash style. Crafting is back and it no longer requires any perk investment. Instead, all you need is the right amount of crafting materials, which you find around the world or get for disassembling your items. You also find and buy recipes that let you craft. Now, most items just take crafting materials like mentioned, but keep an eye out for special items that drop from bosses. Early on in the expansion, I looted a Chimera core from a boss and I didn't know what it did. Later, I was looking through the crafting tab and realized it lets you craft one powerful mod from a selection. For example, this power weapon mod makes the gun fire explosive rounds, which I don't need to tell you is an extremely powerful effect. Thankfully, this one-off mod can be moved around on your weapons, unlike the other mods which are locked to the weapon you put it on or are destroyed when you disassemble. Choose wisely and be sure to check your available crafting after boss fights. Now this might go without saying for some, but when given the options to do side content and gigs, take your time, explore and do them. You can only experience your first time once, so don't race to the finish of the storyline. You'll be surprised what matters and how much joy you get from immersing yourself in the world. Also, I highly recommend starting a fresh save to play through the new expansion and the base game if you have the time, just because 2.0 really changes the game up in ways that's hard to describe without spoiling things. The experience is very different and starting from a high level character is a bit disconnected. You don't feel like you earn the space in time. But for those who are more time poor, you can get through the expansion in around 10 to 20 hours with an existing character. There are choices all throughout Cyberpunk from small time gigs to major story beats. Phantom Liberty is no different. Without spoiling anything, when ultimately faced with major story related choices, at this point, reload an auto save and make a hard save. There are two major paths and variations within those. One path in particular I vastly enjoyed more than the other, though both are good. You absolutely need to experience both because the missions differ quite extensively. So complete one and reload your hard save to see what would have happened if you went the other direction. Also the game brings with it a new ending you absolutely need to see, so having a hard save means you can go back and meet the requirements if needed. Feel free to experiment with your build. You can purchase a special shard that lets you reset your points and try a new build, 
So when you start Phantom Liberty or Cyberpunk Patch 2.0, your previously played characters will be offered a complete attribute and perk reset since the whole system has changed since then. Save at this point and experiment with the perks, or you could just check out my perk showcase video. This will let you decide just how you want to build your character. The cyberware mechanics have also changed, so make sure you head right away before you start the expansion storyline to your nearest Ripper dock. Vic will call you and tell you he has installed some new changes, so that's how you'll know. Your cyberware effects have been changed, so be sure to read what they can do now. You'll want to compare what cyberware you have versus what you can buy, and you can do that at any Ripper dock. Already bought cyberware isn't necessarily a quip. When you click on the selection, all purchased cyberware will have a tick on it. The rest need to be purchased from the Ripper Dock. Now you have a limited amount of cyberware you can equip, denoted by the bar on the left called Cyberware Capacity. Each piece of cyberware contributes an amount to that bar, aka has an amount of cyberware capacity, and once you hit the limit, you can't equip more, so even if you have free space on your body, you need to make sure you fall within that cyberware limit. More powerful cyberware effects cost more of the bar, so head into the tech tree if you want to equip more cyberware and get more bonuses, like temporary cyber psychosis for doing so. With the healing items system change, you don't use up health items anymore, instead they have a charge. This means you won't be able to store up hundreds of these and then spam them like some kind of psychopathic junkie. You need to wait until the cooldown is up before you can heal again. With some perks boosting your healing capacity and giving you extra charges, these are all located in the tech tree. Also, there's another way. Purchase the blood pump from the Ripper Dock ASAP. It heals you for a large amount and utilizes a short cooldown. Plus, some abilities like the ones in the body tree give you adrenaline, which is a temporary health and damage bonus for using the blood pump. Skills are returning in 2.0 and Phantom Liberty, but have been changed. These are not to be confused with perks. Skills are a completely different system. There are now five categories, Headhunter, Netrunner, Shinobi, Solo, and Engineer. As these gain experience and level up, each five ranks gives you a passive skill in sequential order. These can range from bonuses to sneaking in the shinobi tree to the occasional perk point, with the capstones all affecting a different activatable cyberware like active camo or the berserk. You get experience from doing things like firing a tech weapon, which gives engineer specific experience. But since the exact ways aren't listed, I'm unsure right now as to the ways to level these up, though you can make assumptions based on what the passive skills offer. You can also now find skill shards around Night City that give you experience in a skill category, so you're rewarded for looting your enemies in skills that you might have struggled to level up otherwise. Early on, you're not rewarded for spreading attribute points out. Rush right for the capstone of a perk tree by getting 20 points in your chosen attribute, then switch to aiming for 20 in another attribute. Most of your power will be from getting to the few endgame perks of your build, whereas wasting time along the journey will delay that spike, though like any RPG, you could ignore this advice and still have a blast. There are also exceptions to this, like if for some reason you want to fully focus on vehicle combat, in which case you just need to get to rank 4 in each attribute. No idea why you do this though, but each to their own. Alongside the expansion, Phantom Liberty is a new, smaller skill tree focused around the relic. Right now, at the start of the storyline, a character will unlock the latent abilities of your relic, giving you three more choices of perks. The first buffing your arms cyberware, your Gorilla Arms, Mantis Blades, Mono Wire, and Missile Launch system. The second lets you see special weak points on your enemies for bonus damage and buffs. Hitting these also does a cool explosion that hits nearby enemies as well. The third is the perk that buffs your stealth, letting you break out of combat by hitting your active camo, which is now in your cyberware. I want to pay special mention to putting a point in the perk that buffs your mono wire called Jailbreak, and then upgrading that to a perk called Data Tunneling. I feel like this is the most game-changing relic path, and it really fine-tunes your hacking build as it lets you throw hacks on enemies with your mono wire without having to scan them first, letting you continuously hack and slash, pun instigated by CD Projekt Red, so don't blame me. The mono wire has a dedicated slot for control quick hacks, and you unleash them on your enemies by charging up your mono wire, then releasing. Keep in mind the intelligence perk tree has bonuses for striking enemies you've already quick hacked, 
so this combos with those perks and itself. Then upgrading Jailbreak to Data Tunneling makes it so quick hack you apply by your mono wire now spreads to other enemies. So you'll hit one and they'll all be, for example, unable to fire their weapons and they'll be taking major damage from you. So don't sleep on this path. A little into the story, you'll unlock the Behavioral Imprint Synced Faceplate Cyberware. It lets you escape the police as long as the bounty level is 4 or lower. You aren't getting away from max tack unless you hide like a coward. The cool thing about this cyberware is no matter what you have in your active slot, be it grenades, camo, or your missile launch system, once you get into your vehicle, this slot will change to the faceplate. So if you're evading the cops and you're out of sight, activate the camo and you'll lose a chunk of time off the required amount to evade them and remove your bounty. At lower levels, it just straight up makes them give up the chase. It's very useful and something not immediately known. And that's everything. What did you think? Excited to get into Cyberpunk? Let me know below. And for everything RPG, you're in the right place. Ciao, friends.